Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Saturday, August the 13th. Welcome to Saturday to the weekend. You know, I love Saturdays. I always find it a day where I can get things done that maybe I didn't have time or make time for during the week and get out into nature, visit with friends, have a coffee with, uh, with my family and just feel like it's time to relax a bit. So I hope you're having a nice morning. I've got my cup of tea. Today it is, uh, it's called Amazing Grey <laughs> and it's a really nice uh, brand of Earl Grey tea, which I, I love. So I um, hope you're well. To, uh, for those of you who are joining for the first time, just to let you know that um, Mornings with 60 and Me is a daily online news uh, show. It's where we can get together, have a cup of tea, talk about what's going on in the world and share some feel-good stories, some stories that are going to inspire us and um, energize us to um, have, a, you know, have a great life in our 60s. So let me bring you up to speed on some things that are going on in the news. Now, the Olympics, of course, have been big news for the last week, and I haven't gone into too much detail every day uh, but uh, because there's plenty of sources for every single detail. But I do want to highlight that Michael Phelps, um, is uh, the U.S. swimmer, is doing an amazing job. He now has 22 gold medals. And I read yesterday that this means he has now officially passed the all-time Olympic great, greatest star who lived 2,000 years ago. His name was Leonidas of Rhodes. He won his, uh, he was a runner and he won 12 individual um, events. And yesterday, Michael Phelps passed that with 13. So he is now the official all time greatest uh, Olympic athlete of all time and is still got four more medals, gold medals that he can win. Now, I say four because yesterday it was five that a Singapore swimmer, his name was Joseph Schuling, beat Michael Phelps and he, he beat him in the 100 meter butterfly. So he got the gold for Singapore and Michael Phelps now has four more gold medals he is able to win. It's amazing. I mean, he really is a tremendous athlete, but so are so many other people. I could spend literally, you know, an hour telling you all the great uh, athletes that have competed in the Olympics. Hope you're enjoying it. If you're watching, let me know what you have uh, found the most fascinating and um, compelling at the Olympics. So here we go. Oh, Katie Ledecky, I must mention, she's another US swimmer and she just won her fourth gold medal in the 800 meter freestyle. She is remarkable. And I saw a really cute picture of her actually when she was about 12, 13, getting her book signed by Michael Phelps. He was at a book signing and there, there were two of them together when she was 14. He was probably in his 20s and just a remarkable success story for the US swimmers. Now, Thailand has been, um, as you know, yesterday I talked about this, was rocked by um, about 11 bombs that went off in five cities across uh, tourist areas in Thailand. Very, very tragic for all kinds of reasons. I mean, of course, there were four people that died. Uh, they were uh, foreign tourists, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Austria, people that, you know, were just there on holiday, just on vacation. And uh, of course, the other side is that these attackers are hitting tourist areas, which is the key business for Thailand and so many countries in that part of the world. But uh, of course, I'm, we're checking in with our 60 and Me sisters that we know are there. Hopefully everyone's okay and uh, everyone's on edge, understandably. But they are now, the police are now saying that it was local sabotage and not uh, an international terror attack. There has been a lot of um, disruption in, th in Thailand over the last few years. The military took over two years ago. And if you remember a few days ago, I talked about there had been an election, a referendum in Thailand where the military brought in a new constitution to tighten the powers of the military and um, create some, what they say, order in Thailand. So this bombing may be related. There's obviously a lot of, re of um, discovery yet to be made. So two men have been arrested and um, are being questioned for these bombings. And let's just hope and pray that people are okay and that it doesn't stop folks from traveling. I always think about this when this happens. I travel so much myself and I love it. And it's so sad when these types of events take place. 
Now, in Venezuela, I wanted to bring you up to speed on that. The government there has uh, opened the border between Venezuela and Colombia again, this time for 15 hours every day. And it's so that people in Venezuela can get out to buy food and medicine. It's just been a really horrific situation in Venezuela. The socialist government is under threat. They're trying to uh, impeach the president, uh, the socialist president. But uh, so far, the you know things have been delayed, and it's just not happening yet. But people are struggling, so they've opened the border with Colombia, so people can get out and buy food and medicine. And the, the pictures of mothers just in you know streaming into the into the border to to get food is amazing. So that's the story in uh, Venezuela. Now in Crimea, there have been renewed tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Now, if you remember back a year ago, uh, Russia annexed Crimea and about 6,000 people were killed in that, in that struggle. So they are now um, in control of Crimea, but they have accused Kiev, uh, capital of Ukraine, of bringing uh, agents into Crimea to start problems again. And Ukraine denies this, but the Russian um, buildup of arms is continuing now along the Crimean border. And this is a very dangerous uh, story between, you know, between two very volatile uh, countries and hopefully the tensions are high, but things will get calmed down hopefully in the next few days. Now, I have a fun story for you. This is just a total aside, totally frivolous. <laughs> I read a uh, headline this morning and it said, Shah Rukh Khan held at US airport. Now, for those of you who love Bollywood films like me, Shah Rukh Khan is the king of Bollywood. I mean, he has been in just about every uh, wonderful Bollywood film in the last you know, 20 years. He's, he's a really handsome, charming, and just, he's a gorgeous human being. He's just real. I, I love his movies. In fact, I love all Bollywood movies. But when I read this headline that he was held at the airport, I thought, well, that's not a surprise. I would I would want to hold him too. He's just so, so amazing. But then when I read the article, yeah, they changed the word from held to detained. <laughs> so he was detained at the airport. And apparently this happens every single time he comes to the United States because he, um, there's a namesake, Shah Rukh Khan. Khan is a very popular name in India and uh, Pakistan. And um, anyway, he got held at the airport and, and questioned because his namesake is on the terrorist watch list. And I, I saw him interviewed and of course, um, he's so so sweet. And I, what I like about him mostly, despite his fame, he is just so down to earth and so real. And celebrities can be you know, very full of themselves, but he isn't. And so Shah Rukh Khan is my hero of Bollywood films. I would love to know, by the way, if any other women out there love, love Bollywood films. I just find them pure, wonderful escapism. And I love the dancing. It's really fun. Anyway, Shah Rukh Khan is on his way. I think he has kids in the, uh, going to college in the United States. So he is, um, he is one of my faves. So I wanted to cover a, a feel-good story with you um, about creativity in midlife. Now, I don't know about you, but I've just started in the last you know, couple of years really exploring my creative side. I've always written, I've always loved to write, but I've also taken up, um, not painting, but like collage making with paper and using, you know, phrases and, and um, just creating little visuals that represent a feeling that I'm having or a thought about something. So anyway, I found this book by a woman called Julia Cameron. She, and it was a Next Avenue article. Um, she's 68, so she understands the challenges of, of, of women and men in their 60s. And she's written a book called Discovering Creativity and Meaning in Midlife. And she comes up with these four strategies for how to explore your creativity in your 60s. And I thought I'd read them because it's Saturday and you may fe be feeling like you want to do something a little creative. So here's her thoughts on what to do every week to develop that creativity muscle. So here we go. Um, first is she suggests to uh, write morning pages. She says three pages, but maybe just one, where you really write down like mundane thoughts, like, you know, it's raining today, or um, logistical, like I need to buy a new umbrella, or, um, you know, rain makes me feel so, um, uh, I don't know, so sad, or it makes me feel so energized. So, you know, write about just, just things that come into your mind, your, your morning pages. The other thing she suggests is to have an artist date with yourself. And this is every week, go somewhere where you're inspired 
doesn't have to be painting artists, but artists in the sense of creativity. So this is go to a museum, go to um, a, a place in the town where there's a, a, maybe a graffiti painting or just something that makes you think about art and uh, creativity. At the zoo, garden center, anywhere that sparkles your imagination. Then the third thing that she suggests is to walk. Now, of course, walking is great for you anyway, physically, but she says go a couple of times a week and just don't take your phone, don't take anything to write with, just go, breathe, uh, watch, listen, close your eyes, sit on a bench, watch the water, listen to the trees, and just have a day or an hour, excuse me, with nature. And finally, she suggests something that we talk about quite often, which is memoir writing. And this is where you just really write about your life. You know, maybe just chapters, you know, cha just write a chapter or half a chapter a week. Short, uh, even maybe a few sentences or paragraphs. But memoir is where you think about connections, how you had experiences in your life that, that built on something, that, that led you somewhere. So I think that's kind of cool. And, you know, it's never too late to start. That's really her message here is that uh, start being creative today. Do something fun and tell us about it. So uh, another tip for today is today's funny day. You know, I do these, these days like today is National Pecan Pie Day. But today is National or International Left Handers Day. So if you're left-handed, you, this is your day. And I didn't realize this, that only about 10% of the population in the world is, is left-handed. And so that's 10% special, unique people. And uh, there's lots of, you know, obviously challenges with being left-handed. But the challenge for you today, if you're right-handed, is try, stump, try doing stuff with your left hand. You know, brush your teeth or um, try to cut paper <laughs> with scissors with left hands. Very, very hard. So that's uh, celebrate your friends who are left-handed. Today is their day. Now, um, finally, uh, I want to, well, before I do my final um, woman of the day, I just want to remind you that these mornings with 60 and me are for you. These are, this is your time. It's your time to um, get together with me, but also talk to each other uh, in the comments section below. Just say shout out, hi everyone, or where you're from, or what you're doing today. Let's just get to know each other. And also, if you want to get the news first, go to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and then you can um, you know be the first to know when the news is released but every day I've been um, really shouting out and announcing uh, our woman of the day someone who has told me in the comment section that they'd like to be featured because well they've done something cool in their 60s and so today is Tamara Layton Greishaber Tamara so you are our woman of the day and this is her story at 62 Tamara started her life as a single woman she, at 66, began seriously pursuing a writing career and has a blog called Meandering Mind. Uh, and now she's Tamara is writing a book and she hopes to finish it this fall. It's called Postcards to My Younger Self. And I think I'd like to read that one. Um, she says she's, fa she's fantasized about living abroad all her life. So this autumn, she is going to go to Spain. She's going to live there for at least a month learn the language and write. So she's going to travel by herself, which is another thing that we do a lot of here on 60 and Me. But I just think it's great that Tamara you know, picked up her writing career at 66 and is now doing exactly what she wants with her life. So well done, Tamara. Congratulations and um, for being our woman of the day. And if you'd like to be featured, if you've done something fun in your 60s, just leave it in the comment section below and uh, I'll talk about you tomorrow. Okay, everyone. Well, look, have a really wonderful day. I hope that it's a great Saturday and a good weekend for you. If you um, have, a, have a time, you can answer my question for today, which is, it goes back to our article about creativity in, your, in midlife. And that is, what creative activities do you do? Just leave your comments in the section below. We'll have a chat with each other. But just share with us what creative activities you do. I look forward to talking with you again tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Take good care. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye for now.